The clean, uncrowded beaches on Topsail Island are as beautiful as any on the East Coast. But on the dunes, in between the houses, there's a string of concrete towers, and therein lies a mystery. Folks who visit the island for the first time almost always say they think they're submarine spotting towers from World War II, but it ain't so. These husky old towers were built in 1946, well after the guns of World War II were silenced. Once, there were eight of them. One has been bulldozed away, but the rest have survived more than a half century of violent storms, salty winds, and blistering sunshine. Beach erosion has overwashed the underpinnings of the northernmost topsail tower, revealing stout wooden pilings that show little signs of wear from the daily beating of Atlantic tides. The towers were built for the Navy as part of a top secret missile development program called Operation Bumblebee. Many years ago, aeronautical engineers determined that a bumblebee cannot fly because it lacks the wing area to support such a round, heavy body. Bumblebees never study engineering, so they just go ahead and fly anyway. The Navy realized that rockets would play an important role in future combat operations, so it chose this narrow, 26-mile-long barrier island for its developmental laboratory. During the summer of 1946, a series of structures sprang up. A blast-proof missile assembly building, a 12-inch thick launch pad near the beach, an underground observation bunker near the launch pad, a small control tower, and eight larger towers. And their whole purpose was to photograph uh, rockets, missiles that were fired off of the launching pad at Jolly Roger Pier. On the day of a firing, giant cameras with 40-inch lenses were mounted atop the towers to photograph the rocket as it whizzed by at speeds as high as 1,500 miles per hour. After a year and more than 200 rocket launches, Operation Bumblebee outgrew its cradle. So in 1948, the program was moved to a desert location near California's Death Valley. Today, Operation Bumblebee is long gone, but not forgotten. The explosion-proof assembly building houses the Missiles and More History Museum. It's a trove of photographs, movies, and artifacts describing the rocket program, the huge World War II Army Camp Davis that once thrived nearby, and the early pirate-infested history of Topsail Island. When you visit the museum, ask Rose Peters to show you what Frank Sheeran found at the water's edge in July of 1994. This is a booster rocket. It was found on the beach and it was authenticated. It weighs about 100 pounds and we were advised to keep it in an aquarium type tank with salt water to preserve it. This would be the booster and the booster would push the rocket to the speed that they were testing for the ramjet. Overhead is the steel beam that once carried newly assembled rockets to the loading dock for transport to the launch pad. The 12 inch thick launch pad survives to this day as a sunny patio at the Jolly Roger Motel. And the seven towers, one was a fishing pier bait shop until Hurricane Fran destroyed the pier. Tower number three was a nice waterfront getaway cottage with a wooden addition, but the addition vanished during a storm. If you look closely, you can spot five towers that have been turned into sturdy dwellings. One is an elaborate structure that has the tower as its facade, with two wings added. One rests on a dune near the center of Surf City. And a mile south of Surf City, there's this palm-festooned three-story beauty 
whose elegance runs more than skin deep. Inside, it's a cozy bachelor pad with a million dollar ocean view. And between Surf City and Topsail Beach, on the banks of Topsail Sound, Tower Number Two keeps its solitary vigil. This one is on the National Register of Historic Places, and it's the only tower that you can actually step inside to get a true sense of its strength and its mystique. David Stallman has written two lovingly detailed books about the area's history, and he helped to develop the museum and the Rocket Assembly Building into the treasures they are today. My research into uh, what really happened here was very helpful in getting the National Register to recognize it as a historic building. My payoff is in uh, seeing this building preserved. People are very supportive here of the museum and appreciative of it. And it's, it's putting Topsail Island on the map. The winds may blow and the tides may flow, but chances are your great-grandchildren will be able to play in the shadow of one of these stalwart old towers, and maybe someone will tell them the story of Operation Bumblebee.